Salamu alaykum everyone. All living things are under the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this story, we are going to learn about our last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I will be starting first with a perfect explanation. But before I do that, what do you people think of a messenger? So a messenger is a person who tells the people about the message of God. And as we all know that there is only one God in this universe. He is the creator and the one who created us and we are supposed to worship him. So the messengers as bearers of good news and as well as of warning in order to make the mankind to have no plea against Allah after coming of messengers. So Allah chose messengers and the prophets and then he sent them to each nation and commanded them to call them to worship Allah alone and to explain the ways which would bring happiness in this world and in the hereafter as well. And also to bring glad tidings of paradise to those who believed and the warning of hell to those who disbelieved. Anyways, let's get to our explanation right now about the Prophet Muhammad because that is our main point. So the Prophet was the last and final messenger of Allah. So the messenger of God, peace be upon him. He is the most honorable person in lineage and greatest in stature and merit. He is Muhammad bin Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib bin Hashim bin Abid Manaf. So starting with his father, his father's name was Abdullah and he had married to Amin bin Wahab. And then our prophet was born on Monday, which was in the 12th of Rabi al Awal, the year of the elephant, which was basically around in 571 AD. So, our Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was born in Am al Fil, which means the year of the elephant. That was the year in which Abraha went to demolish the Kaaba, but the Arabs confronted him, and Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. وسلم, he went to meet Abraha because he had his camels with him and he wanted his camels back. So Abraha expressed his surprise that Abdul Muttalib never asked anything about the Kaaba. And then in response, Abdul Muttalib told him that the owner of the Kaaba would take care of his house and the house belongs to the Lord whom will protect it. Just before the final attack, Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent a large flock of birds. Each one of them was carrying stones in their beaks and they went to destroy the army. So what really happened that time is that the pebbles hit Abraha and his army and none of them survived at all, none of them. Just only a few men returned to Habasha in order to confirm the people who died, which was Abraha uh, and then also his army as well. And thus Allah protected his house and also the people. MashaAllah. Anyways, let's get to our main point here. Who really was Prophet Muhammad? He basically was orphaned at an early age. Then he was raised under the care of his paternal uncle, Abu Talib. Since as we know that his father died while the Prophet was in his mother's womb, according to the correct sayings of scholars, and the messenger was born as an orphan. So the scholars say that the Almighty, did he not find you an orphan and took refuge? That, By the way, ladies not only, and gentlemen. But the mother of the Prophet, peace be upon her, Amina bin Wahab, died when only the Prophet was six years old. Then, unfortunately, the Prophet had to move in order to live under the sponsorship of his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, as we talked about him earlier. So... His grandfather took a great care of him, thinking that there is good and great affairs. But then, sadly, his grandfather passed away at the age of 80. And that the Prophet had to move again to live under the sponsorship of his uncle, which was Abu Talib. And amazingly, he used to take him with him on his business trips. And now we are going to discuss about Khadija bint Khuwailid. So first of all, she was born in 555 AD 
and she was the first wife and first follower of the Islamic prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Khadija, she was the daughter of Khawailid ibn Asad, as he was the leader of Quraysh tribe in Mecca. And not only that, she was a successful businesswoman in her own rights. She was often referred to by Muslims as mother of the believers. So Khadija ibn Khawailid, may God be pleased with her, was of great wealth and high proportions. And she used to also work in tradings. At one time, when she heard that the Prophet Muhammad was a sincere man in saying that he was honest in his work, generous in his morals, and so many more about him, she got interested in that person. But also we know that Khadija was a good merchant who used to have a servant called as Maisara. She sent her to test the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, honesty, after hearing about him by giving him an amount of money to trade with. Then see if the Prophet will take any of the money to himself or give her the money complete. But successfully, the Prophet Muhammad passed the test, which was the reason for her requesting marriage to the messenger. So she got engaged to him by the Prophet's uncle Hamza, and then they got married. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, declared his prophethood when he was 40 years old. Before his prophethood, he used to go to Cape of Hera, which is situated outside the city of Mecca and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day, as usual, he was on the cave when Angel Jibreel appeared to him and said, Read. Prophet Muhammad responded to him that he cannot read. Angel Jibreel asked him three times and got the same answer from the Prophet. Finally, Angel Jibreel told him to read in the name of his Lord. Then Prophet Muhammad started reading and this is how he received his first revelation. Then the Prophet had returned to Khadija in a state of great panic of what had happened to him. So one day the messenger went up on the mountain of Safa and called on the tribes of the Quraysh to unite God. And they mocked him. But the Prophet's logical, eloquent speeches greatly impressed many of the people who heard his words. In most gatherings and public places, people talked about the new faith more than than anything else. To those who had suffered from the extortion of the cruel oppressors and were tired of the injustices and inhuman conditions prevailing in Mecca, the celestial words of the Holy Prophet opened a door to the world of hope and prosperity and gave new life to their half-dead bodies. But the selfish, malevolent Quraysh chiefs refused Islam and since the Holy Prophet mentioned their deviations and faults at every opportunity, they decided to hinder this spiritual and intellectual revolution by any means possible. Abu Talib took upon himself to protect the messenger. Abu Talib tried to solve the problem peacefully and after they left, he talked to the Prophet about the matter. Addressing Abu Talib, the Holy Prophet of Islam remarked that he swore by his Almighty God that even if they put the sun in his right hand and the moon in his left hand and in return demand him to quit the propagation of Islam and pursuance of his divine aim. He said that he will never do what they want him to do and he said that he is determined to carry on, on his d- the duty toward God to the last moment of his life, even if it means losing his life. He also said that he is strongly determined to attain his goal. Abu Talib did not heed the words of the Quraysh by what they told him to do to the Messenger of Allah. Then the tribes of the Quraysh agreed to boycott the Messenger and that boycott had consisted of not selling or buying. And in addition to not marrying them, these were documented on a board and hung on the wall of the Kaaba, which took the siege to last for about three years. And it ended after Hisham bin Am consulted with Zuhair bin Abi Umayyah and others about ending the siege. And they told them to hang in your name, God, on the wall of the Kaaba. And thus the siege was lifted. So some days later, the lady Khadija, who was the support of the messenger of God, three years before the Prophet's immigration to Medina, she had passed away. And in the same year, Abu Talib, who was protecting the messenger from the harm of the Quraysh, became severely ill. When his illness worsened, before that, Abu Talib was asked to stop the messenger from praying to God. 
Then Abu Talib told the Prophet what they wanted him to do and the Prophet did not pay any attention to that. But with his uncle's death and the death of Khadija, may God be pleased with them, the messenger was deeply saddened because they were his support and protection so that year was called the year of grief. After these all, the messenger of God urged his companions to migrate to the land of Abyssinia because of what they were subjected from torture and harm that was their first migration in Islam, and their number reached 83 men. And when Quraysh heard about the immigration matter, they sent Abdullah bin Abi Rabia and Amr with gifts to send to the king of Abyssinia, who was Negus. And they asked him to return the immigrant Muslims. Protesting that they had deviated from the religion and so many other things, but the Negus did not respond to them. He wanted to be sure, so he asked the Muslims to explain their positions. So Jafar bin Abi Talib spoke about it and told him everything. And the Negus told the messenger guided them to the path of righteousness and truth way away from the path of immorality and vices. So they believed in it and they were subjected to harm and bad because of nothing. And Jafar read to him the beginning of Surah Maryam and the Negus wept loudly. And he told the Quraysh companions that he would not hand over any of the Muslims to them. And he returned their gifts to them. But the next day they returned it back to Negus by telling him that the Muslims took the time to say Jesus bin Maryam and Negus asked the Muslims again about their opinions of Jesus. And the Muslims replied back by telling him that Jesus was a slave of God and he was Allah's messenger. And thus the Negus Muslims believed in what they said and they believed in Islam. And now we are going to discuss about the great battle of Badr. So this battle, it took place in the second year of the Hijra on the 17th of Ramadan and it was caused by the Muslims' objection to Quraysh convoy heading to Mecca under the leadership of Abu Safiyan. So the Quraysh rose to protect its caravan and this fighting took place, be place between the Muslims and the number of polytheists which reached a thousand fighters. While the number of the Muslims in here was only 313 men. And still, this lead them with the victory of the Muslims and the killing of 70 of the polytheists and the families of 70 others. God Almighty sent his messenger, may blessings and peace be upon him, to show the people the generosity of morals and confirm the good from them and fix what has been corrupted. Calling him the truthful and honest, but for lack of honesty, is one of the attributes of hypocrisy. So his eminence, pardoning people and pardoning them as much as possible. Okay, so at the end, the Prophet, may blessings and peace be upon him, pass away on Monday, the 12th of the month of Rabi al-Awwal of the 11th year of the Prophet's migration. That was after his illness and severity over him. On his illness, he indicated the arrival of his daughter, Fatima al-Zahra, and spoke to her twice in secret. And she cried at first and laughed in the second. So at first was that his soul would be seized. And in the second, he told her that she would be the first of his household to follow him. So overall from this, we learn how truthful and generous our prophet was. And as I have explained his biography and as well as few stories at his time, I hope you have learned some few lessons from this. And as well as we all know, our Prophet will stay in our hearts. And in the occasion of his birthday, let us take this time to be inspired by his life in welcoming more empathy and thoughtfulness into our own.